Hi, I'm Dale Berg with Goodridge USA. I'm here today on behalf of Tucker Rocky to show you how to install Goodridge brake lines on Tucker Rocky television. Today we're installing a Goodridge Harley Davidson Econoline brake line kit on a Sportster. This brake line features clear coated stainless steel braided hose with chrome fittings. Now let's get to the install. Install the appropriate banjo into the master cylinder. As you see, we've already removed the existing brake line and we have cleaned the master cylinder. We have drained the fluid out of the entire system. This can be a little bit awkward at times because it is a stainless steel braided line and it is a little bit rigid. It doesn't have the flexibility that a rubber line does. However, you're gonna get a lot higher pressure and a lot, lot more powerful stopping power out of a stainless steel braided brake line. See how smooth everything slides together. It is advisable to always reinstall all grommets and cable holders when uh, installing a new brake line, uh, which Daniel is doing now. That way it routes the brake line more effectively so you don't have any rubbing or chafing on the brake line when it is installed. Uh, next step is installing the banjo on the caliper with two fresh crest caskets once again, as Daniel is doing now. Carefully screw in the banjo bolt, making sure you don't cross any threads. And that the brake line is taking a natural bend all the way from the master cylinder down to the caliper. We will tighten up all grommets and cable holders at the end of the installation. Right now we just want to make sure that everything fits properly. Okay, we've got this loosely installed now. We will torque everything down once we are satisfied with the fit of the brake line and the routing, including the fit on the cable holder. Torque values on Goodrich brake lines. This is, a, this is a chrome steel banjo with a chrome steel banjo bolt. We want to torque this down between 12 and 24 pounds. We recommend you start at the lower end usually about 12 to 14 pounds, and then pressure test once you have everything installed. Daniel now has a torque wrench, which he is setting at the proper torque rating, which he is going to set, which is the next step in the process. You can hear by the clicks that he has got that done successfully. Daniel's now got his torque setting and he is torquing down the banjo bolt going into the master cylinder. You've heard the audible click in the torque wrench. It is sufficiently torqued down. At this point we will be adding a tie wrap to the handlebars so it follows the stock routing and the next step will be to lead the system and the bike will be ready to ride. The next step is to refill the master cylinder with brake fluid. In this case we're using a good DOT 5 brake fluid. It is important to use a good name brake fluid. The brake fluid is the key, one of the main keys to bringing the pressure down to the master cylinder. The other key being making sure you have a great brake line like a Goodridge that will eliminate all expansion from the brake line during braking operations. Okay, the next step is to pressurize the, the brake system to bleed the system, which is pulling the actual fluid through the master cylinder, through the brake lines, down into the calipers, which is also known as bleeding the brake lines. Daniel is using a power bleeder to do that. It is actually acting in a vacuum manner. He's attaching that to the Zerk fitting on there pulling the brake fluid through as he loosens up the Zerk fitting, also known as a brake bleeder valve. During this operation, it is important to make sure that there's always brake fluid in the master cylinder so it will stay pressurized and it doesn't run too low or else you will have to start again. Watch the actual bottle as it fills up to make sure there's no air bubbles inside the bottle. Once there is no more air evident in the bottle, then test the brake lever to make sure it is firm and that will complete your application.